Well, welcome to our live stream today on San Moritz to Italy. And um, we're excited to have so many of you here, uh, both as, as guests and as viewers, participants, but also want to, uh, to welcome and um, glad to, to that, uh, that Louis Waterman Evans and Sophie Quist could join us. They are both Alpha and Wild guys. And let me just kind of tell you how, how this, um, uh, how this came about. So um, normally we're, we're there all summer and and I think most of you who are Alp and Wild guests have have talked with our staff here in the in the US and you probably talk with with Missy or Tari or Tessa and they're wonderful they, they give us they give us great support in uh, making reservations and in and, and, and answering all of your questions prior to the tour. But you know where the magic really happens, that, that's with our guides. And we have 45 guides in the Alps. And we have um, guides that specialize in certain areas and certain types of types of tours. Um, but for for this tour, uh, what happened is is uh, back in September at the end of our normal hiking season in the Alps, Louis and Sophie contacted me, sent me an email and said, you know, if, if Alpha and Wild is looking for a new tour in 2024, um, they want to try uh, the, the Val Bregalia and, and the, the Upper Engadine. And I thought, yes, that's amazing. It's <laughs> an area that I love, but also it's an area that, um, that our, our guests aren't really familiar with have we haven't done a lot of a lot of tours there and so within a, a week my wife and I took off and went to check out this area and and I've been there many times but I hadn't followed the the exact route that Louis uh, and Sophie were referring to well we we fell in love with it uh, and it was, it was we had an amazing ex experience there and just knew that it was uh, something that we wanted to offer as a tour and so I wrote back to Louis, and the only disagreement I had with him is, no, I don't want to do it in 2024. I want <laughs> to do it in 2023, right? <laughs> yeah, that's uh, right. So here we are. Uh, we were able to to get it up fairly quickly, and um, there are more more details to follow. But we're looking forward to being there in in 2023. Louis and and Sophie, what what was there? about or what is there about the Val Bregalia and, and this whole region that uh, prompted you to contact me and, and propose this as a tour? Yeah. Do you want me to go firstly? Should yeah, I start? First. Yeah. Um, so I've been coming back to this part of the Alps. I think we were just chatting about this earlier, I think since 2015, maybe in my personal adventures in the Alps. Um, for climbing, for hiking, for running, for eating amazing food in my downtime when resting from all of that. Um, and so it's an area I keep coming back to whenever I have some time to spend in the Alps. Um, yeah, and then this summer, it just, we were in between tours and it just kind of clicked. We've, we've actually probably got to take people here. We've got to suggest this as a tour because it's, yeah, it's a hidden gem. Yeah, I can pinpoint that specific moment. Um, this past summer, we had two weeks off um, from guiding for Alpenwald, and we were staying in Valbregalia in Vico Soprano. It's, that's a town that we passed through on this tour. We just had the most amazing time out hiking, exploring, eating incredible food, um, going to um, little museums and art galleries, that sort of thing. And we just thought ah, there, there has to be a tour here. So yeah, we contacted Greg and and here we are. And my wife and I had that, that same experience. So be, because this area is kind of unfamiliar to a lot of you, I'll go ahead and uh, we created a map. Tessa in our office created a map. And let's, let's take a look at that map and kind of see what, what we're talking about. So so imagine Switzerland is kind of in the center of Europe. Of course, Italy to the south, Austria to the east, and France to the west, Germany to the north. But but uh, the the area that we're focusing on today is in the southeastern portion of Switzerland, and it's because of its location so close to the Italian border, so close to the Austrian border, and and 
kind of along the major trade routes, it, it's it's had influence, cultural influences from from everything from Roman soldiers to crusaders and, and um, many others over the last two, 3,000 years. So, so it has this rich and varied culture, also phenomenal cuisine, and just the, the incredible sights, uh, the, the, the views. It's, it's nestled in a high valley. San Moritz is at an elevation of 6,000 feet. And the Maloya Pass, likewise, 6,000 feet elevation. And then you drop down to Italy, uh, Lake Como, and you're at about 1,000 feet elevation. So, so quite a quite a contrast in the in the terrain. But then you have these views of the Bernina Alps and the glaciers looming overhead. So just a very dramatic setting. The uh, San Moritz is is well known. I mean, everybody's heard of San Moritz, but um, it's it's not not really widely visited by most Americans. Uh, it's um, it's best known as a winter resort, and these mountains uh, above are are covered with snow year round uh, in, in the in the ski season, and so um, it's popular winter. In fact, it's the birthplace of winter sports. Uh, it's where the, the, the second Olymp Winter Olympic Games were held, and then uh, it's, it's hosted the Winter Olympics twice. So it's still a, a popular winter destination, but those, those slopes are also wonderful uh, for, for hiking during, during the summer. Um, it, it's uh, in the Bernina Alps, and so the, uh, you'll, you'll see many glaciers. And on the, on the second day of the trip, we hike up to the, up to the uh, Mortarach Glacier. And, and that's uh, one of the largest glaciers in, in the Alps, but um, right, right in the heart of the Bernina Alps. And um, I, I'm talking about just kind of the general aspects, but, but Louis and Sophie, are, are there highlights that you'd like to mention, th things that just impressed you about this region? Yeah, sure. I can start with that. Um, and I'm, I'm going to give you a little bit of a cop out answer here. Maybe Sophie can be more specific. But I'm going to say the journey as a whole is what makes this trip. Um, starting in the chic Swiss resort of St. Moritz, like you've already mentioned, ending in Chiavenna, Italy, um, near to Lake Como. There's such huge differences in such a short distance over such a short um, space of time different languages, three different languages, uh, different cultures that come with that, different foods. Um, yeah, absolutely incredible journey. Um, maybe Sophie can be more specific. <laughs> okay, I'll give you something specific. It's pretty hard to choose a highlight. Um, coming okay. back to this place is like the, the granite um, mountains, the granite peaks. And I think that really comes in on this itinerary when you cross the Maloya Pass and you come into Val Bregalia. Um, and you you get the view of the north ridge of the Piz Badil and, and you go up to Albinia on the way back through that valley and you see these amazing sheer granite faces and just walking in that kind of rich landscape and history um, is, is one of the highlights of this trip. Yeah, so, so as I mentioned, we, we start in this high valley, San Moritz, then go to Sils Maria, uh, over to the Maloya Pass, and then at the Maloya Pass, we're about 6,000 feet elevation. And that's where we cross the Maloya Pass and begin our descent into the Val Regalia. When we're at the Maloya Pass on, on our rest day, we'll take a, about a 45-minute walk over to this, this beautiful lake, uh, Lac de Cabloc. Mm -hmm. and, and on the shore of that lake is a, a wonderful mountain restaurant where we have, have lunch. And, and it's worth the, the walk just to go to that mountain restaurant, even if you didn't have the, these beautiful lake lake views. So you drop down into the Val Bregalia, and the Val Bregalia is a rural, pastoral, um, very, very, just a beautiful, peaceful setting. And, um, and it's, um, it still offers these commanding views across the, uh, across the, 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 the valley to the Bernina Alps. Uh, a lot of cows in the Val Regalia. Um, there, there's so much to, to love about what, what we see. As Louis mentioned, there's, there's three different languages. And actually, um, 
you know, you have the, the German influence, the Swiss German influence in, in San Moritz. You have, you get over to the Moya Pass and, and Sils Maria, and it's a Romanche. And Romanche is a, a Roman language, very, very uh, closely, in fact, brought in by, by Roman soldiers who occupied the area 2,000 years ago. And, uh, and then you drop down into the Val Bregalia, where, um, where it's primarily Italian spoken and, and, and arrive in Italy. So a um, lot, to, lot to find uh, exciting and, and new about this. Uh, Louis and Sophie, what, what will guests find on this tour that they may not have experienced in the, um, in the Bernese Alps or in, um, in Zermatt or Chamonix? Do you want to start, Louis? Uh, yeah, sure, I can. Um, yeah, so I'll just pick up on the point about language there um, that you mentioned there, Greg, on, on Romance language. I think this is something that's really special to the to the region, and this is the the fourth national language of Switzerland, along with German, French, um, and Italian. And there's only um, circa sixty thousand speakers um, in Switzerland. They're almost exclusively in Graubünden. That's the canton. That this tours in and connected to that language comes a unique culture history identity um so so soaking up that um that identity that comes with the language i think is is really unique something that guests would not experience on any other album world tour yeah um and i mean i already mentioned the the ruggedness of the landscape which i think is quite unique to this part of switzerland or the part of the alps and um, but there's there's also really this cultural um, aspect to the the Upper Ingen and, and Val Bregalia that really struck us when you walk around, you hike around the small villages, you encounter on the trail, and you'll see small art trails or galleries or historical sites because trade routes passed through here in medieval times. So there's so much history just throughout the region for you to explore, and I think that's pretty unique. Um, I mean, there's there's a lot of history in all the the valleys of, of Switzerland, um, but it's 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 a different uh, experience here. Um, and then yeah, it's yeah. so rich, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the so people have asked how we how we classify how difficult is this tour, and we rate this as a a moderately strenuous mm -hmm. tour, uh, comparable to our exploring the Jungfrau or Dolomites uh, um, trip, um, but it's not as strenuous as, say, the Chamonix and Mont Haute route or the Tour de Mont Blanc. Uh, typically, um, five to seven miles a day uh, with, with modest elevation gain. So, in fact, on the on the first the slide here shows Muotas Moral, and on the second day of the tour, we'll take the funicular up to this this uh, peak that overlooks the, the San Moritz and the, the Upper Engadine Valley. And so what you see stretched out in the, in the background there is the, is the route of the tour over the next two or three days leading on to the Maloya Pass. So you can see it's, uh, it's um, kind of gentle, gentle terrain uh, with beautiful views across the valley to the, the peaks and the, and the, um, and the lakes. So that that's kind of the 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 terrain we're talking about, uh, but I think on the on this tour and, and as both of you have mentioned, the focus is is more on the on the, the charm, the the uh, the culture, the history. In fact, when, when my wife and I completed this and spent spent a week there, I I said this is the most romantic tour we do. It really is. Uh, and in fact, so so I, well, let's talk about the hotels. There's a question on which lakes, and there's there's kind of a series of lakes, uh, Lake San Moritz, which is right here, and then just onward you come to to, to uh, Lake Lake Sills, and I can't remember the name, the name of the next lake. Uh, <laughs> you you mean Cav Cav Cavlock as well? But the uh, the the lake that we have here in this picture is is uh, is the lake that San Moritz is is built on uh, sur surrounds, and 
the reason I have this this photo here, this slide, is because you notice across the lake there's this this hotel on the on the um, on the left hand side of the photo. That's the hotel where we stay. So we arrive in San Moritz, and 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 rather than stay in the um, kind of in the in the tourist um, shopping core of San Moritz, which which is enjoyable, we're just ten minutes away, and we we stay here on the lake at the at the bald house I'm say. And this is a, a, a beautiful, beautiful location right on the, on the lake and, and yet removed from the, the touristy, busy uh, part of San Moritz. From there, we, we, uh, we ascend um, Pisner up to, uh, up to Corbach and then come down and traverse along the slope over to uh, a mountain over to Sils Maria and, and then on to Maloya. And at the Maloya Pass, we stay at the Maloya Kulm Hotel. And the Maloya Kulm is, is, is a hotel that dates, it's been a hotel since, since 1646. Now, obviously it's gone through some wonderful renovations. And, uh, but, but if you want to stay in, they have two vintage rooms. And the vintage rooms, uh, you can see them on the website, they, they have the old wooden timber floors and low ceilings. I, I think Louis will probably not enjoy being in the vintage room. But <laughs> Louis is about, what, about six foot five? And uh, he's probably yeah, about that. against the, the timbers on those ceilings. But those, those, those rooms are just loaded with charm. But all, all the other rooms, too, are beautifully updated. It's a spa hotel uh, with some, some nice spa features and uh, and uh steam rooms and so forth and and that that hotel sits right on the cusp of the of the pass and and you walk out the door and you're basically walking down the down the maloya pass into the bob regalia uh, from from there we go on to solio and solio is in the heart of the bob regalia and it's one of the most just just beautifully charming um, little little mountain villages um, you can imagine, and, and with these dramatic views across the valley into the the peaks and glaciers of the Bernina Alps. In Solio, we stay at a hotel called the Palazzo Salis, and the Palazzo Salis has has was built in 1630, and then in in the late 1800s. Um, converted into to a to a hotel. Um, how, Louis? I know you you love uh, the Palazzo Salis as much as as much as I do. What what observations or memories do you have from from Solio and and from that? Uh, from sure. That era? Well, I think the name says it all, Greg. It's a palazzo, so like a, a palace. Um, it's yeah, uh, it's just incredible. Um, yeah, it's. I, I think I, I won't say too much more than than that for now. But it's a palace, and I recommend that people um, people look look it up and um, and see how incredible it is. Really, really special experience. Maybe maybe I can jump in and oh, be, specific, be specific. Be specific. Uh, specific on that one. Then there's this beautiful garden uh, with mm -hmm. it because it is an old palace, and you have these like tranquil gardens to it. It's a really peaceful place. I think that's one of the great joys of this it's just oh, that it's Sophie, that, that's what i was going to mention you see that tree on the left hand side of the photo that is a sequoia tree and and i walked up to the base of that tree and that that tree is in the gardens that you're referring to behind the hotel and and that tree was imported from california back in the 1850s and and it's it's uh, it's probably the largest tree I've ever seen in the Alps. The the base of that tree is just massive, but it's one of two sequoia trees in at, in the gardens of this of this hotel. And then from um, from Solio, we we continue down the, the valley and um, arrive at some beautiful waterfalls, and then arrive at the uh, in, in Chiavena, Italy, across the border. Uh, the the hotels that we've chosen. By the way, th these are, in my mind, 
the, these these hotels are as good or if not better than any hotels we have on, on any tour. I'm just so impressed with the with the, the, the wonderful cuisine and the quality of these hotels. And Louie and Sophie, I know that you're your foodies and that uh, food plays an important part in your um, in your travels and and so so we 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 won't let you down here with these hot with the the cuisine uh, at these these hotels. Also, that there's a unique type of restaurant that that is found in in the the Val Regalia and and as you move down towards Lake Como, and it's called a, a Croto restaurant. Um, in in Switzerland and in, in in the Italian speaking parts of um, of Switzerland, they're, they're known as grotto restaurants. And it's where they they're restaurants that are built into the walls of a uh, of the cliffs, and it's where they store their cheese and their wine, and and they're now converted into restaurants. So they have this, I don't know what what how would you describe a, a crotto restaurant? They're, they're 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 fun and wonderful cuisine. What? Yeah, I mean. The, the food is what um, really makes it um, and a speciality in, in uh, Crotta restaurants uh, in this region is pizzoccheri um, and pizzoccheri is if people haven't tried it before it's this um, you can have two different types one is wheat and one is buckwheat like little buckwheat pasta and it's with um, butter and cream and cheese and baked uh, with a crispy sage leaf on top and so it's quite a hearty dish and they sometimes ring a bell in the crotto when someone orders pizzoccheri um, but perfect after a long day's hiking um, yeah really incredible experience to have one of those so so take it from louis you will love the pizzoccheri and <laughs> and um and so make make a point of ordering pizzoccheri uh while while you're there and of course we'll we'll have several opportunities so at the end of the tour, we arrive in 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 Chiavena, Italy, and then uh, to conclude, we return to San Moritz. And there's a couple of reasons we do this. Um, we we pass several beautiful waterfalls. We return by way of the Albina Dam, and uh, have a have a restaurant, a favorite restaurant there. And then we cross, we go up the Maloya Pass. Um, as I mentioned to someone that asked a, a question earlier, I think Sean on the call here, he, he, he asked um, if we see the road. You know, as you're going down the valley, you don't really see the Maloya Pass Road. But this road is like something out of a James Bond movie. And you can imagine James Bond and his Aston Martin just zipping along the, the, these windy curves of the Maloya Pass. And uh, so, so we come back up the Maloya Pass via the road and then have our final night in San Moritz, which allows you to do some some uh, last minute shopping in San Moritz. But also San Moritz is a great jumping off point for any onward travels. If you want to take the Glacier Express, uh, the Glacier Express starts in San Moritz and goes on to Zermatt. That, that would be a wonderful way to conclude the tour is is on your own traveling on the Glacier Express here over the over the Landbosser Viaduct. Uh, from from San Maurits to Zermatt, or or just as easily a, a quick uh, uh, train ride back to Zurich. So um, that that kind of I think wraps up the tour. Um, as far as when when to uh, when to enjoy this region, Louis, do you have Sophie any any ideas or preferences there? Yeah, Sophie, do you want to go for it? Yeah, sure. I mean, so we've um, a September um, kind of start of autumn would be my my definite um, suggestion. I've I've been here at all stages in the summer, and it it um, it's worth remembering that especially the the second half of the tour, Kievenna, it's quite it's a quite a low altitude, um, and that means the temperatures are pretty high. So for sure, autumn brings this kind of slightly cooler, nicer hiking temperatures, beautiful colors bit less crowded um, and also the valley is known for chestnuts which is uh, getting into season in autumn so yeah so so we're doing this uh, tour in September uh, like you said you you avoid the, the heat and the crowds of August and and, man, and it's the colors there's something about the the, the light and the colors mm -hmm. bouncing off the lakes and the 
and the uh, just a tinge of, of fall colors uh, starting to appear. That, that really makes it a, a magical time of the year to be there. So we, we've uh, we've had several questions. I think I've tried to answer those. If if I've missed any questions that any of our, our participants and, and guests have today, uh, please feel free to email me. Oh yes, in fact, Sean says the two lakes in the background. Oh, okay, uh, Sam Moritz, uh, a Silva Planner. That, that's right. So Silver. Tari, Tar, you are a lifesaver. The Silver Pond and the Sil Silver Sea. Those, those are the, the two largest lakes. And then there are some, some hidden tucked away lakes like Lac de Cabloc that, that we go off to that you don't see in that picture. But yes, the lakes are a, a beautiful, spectacular part of, the, of, that, of that region. So, so um, let, let's get to the, the, um, the, the, the offer. And um, we, be, because we're doing this live stream, this is a new tour, we are offering a $150 off per person, um, but only to those who, who are with us on the live stream today or in the next uh, two or three days. So this offer ends December 3rd, um, which is what, Friday, Saturday? Anyway, uh, December 3rd. And it's um, it's it's uh, uh, available again on, only only until that time. There's an offer code, and that is Bernina. So that's the Bernina Alps. So Bernina is the code that you can use. And and if there's two of you, I think Bernina two is is the, the valid code. You'll you see that on our website. Or if you want any assistance and and have questions, additional questions. Please feel free to con contact uh, any of our staff, myself. I'll, I'll be I'll be traveling tomorrow, but uh, happy to answer any questions uh, along the way and on route. Louie and Sophie, thank you so much for joining us, and um, and thank you to Missy, who you don't see. She's in the studio. She's handling your questions, and the uh, and uh, she she can certainly help you as you make your travel plans too. So, um, oh, and, and the question here, is this offered only guided or self-guided? Uh, initially, but basically, every tour we offer on a guided basis, we, we will also offer on a self-guided basis. And uh, so this is, is currently being offered uh, on, initially on a guided basis, but I'm sure within a year, within a, maybe a few months, we will offer it also on a on a self-guided basis. Um, I, I, we, we have guests that have, have done various iterations or variations of this tour on a, on a self-guided basis. So that, that's always an option too. Well, again, thank you so much for joining us and look forward to seeing you in the Alps very soon. Take care, all the best.